and now you could express all the actions the number of action and the value of action in terms of each if you like to write them on the so here the you have this matrix G alpha beta in the matrix form x dot x square x dot x prime x prime x dot x prime all the four things that we calculated just now we can put them here and you can calculate the determinant G alpha beta is x dot x square x prime square minus x dot x prime square and you can write down the s number of action d to sigma minus G alpha beta, this is just d to sigma, and this is the determinant of this and a minus of that. Okay. Just put the value of that. Okay. So uh, then, so this is all about the. Uh, let me not go into the details. You can, you can, for example, you can calculate the momenta involved, which are canonically conjugate to x mu, and you can, you can, you can calculate the Hamiltonian. You can calculate the Virasoro constraints. If needed, I will, I will come back and mention them to you. Okay. But let me skip some of these details. Now uh, we write one more with the help of this. Uh, once we understand this G alpha beta the induced matrix, then we can introduce one more, one more uh, action which is popularly called as Polyakov action, it's also called as bring uh, Vivek here and Hole. Uh, action, this is also called as a string sigma model action. So uh, <coughs> uh, I, I I I do not want to go into the history of what it part. Okay, like Isn't you have. Isn't it called uh, also after Weiser and Zumino? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Correct. Of, uh, all the correct, paper, correct, yeah. correct, correct. Yes, Jumino and Besson. No, Besson. Jumino. W. W is Bess. Bess. Bess and Jumino have several things together. Uh, uh, this is, uh, I'm forgetting Jumino for sure. I'm forgetting the other name. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me let me not even go into the history of this. Let me try to define. Uh, you see, the, for me, uh, there is one very interesting thing, like you call it uh, Feynman path integral approach. It's so popularly Feynman's name is attached to the path integral approach. And you know, originally path integrals were, were, were proposed by none other than Mr. Paul Dirac. Uh, path integral was also given by, by, by Dirac. And so, uh, uh, <coughs> This is minus 2y2 or dy2 d2 sigma is the root of minus h h alpha beta g alpha beta. This term h alpha beta uh, g alpha beta is sometimes written as h dot g where there is nothing special about alpha and beta there uh, dummy indices. 
and let me make it a function of uh, curve space time uh, but this would be a if i make it if i make it dependent on the space time coordinates then this would be a And if I, if I, if I put it, theta mu nu, so for theta mu nu, this is flat. This is the difference. Okay. So theta mu nu h fix minus 1 plus 1 and so on. Minkova scale matrix. Uh, so uh, in that case, and this is what we, we, we right now had, you see, you will gradually see the interplay of H alpha beta with G alpha beta and H alpha beta with eta alpha beta. Okay. And, and this is how we, we do it. So uh, H alpha beta uh, of upstairs or downstairs, one is the inverse of the other, okay. Uh, this H, uh, this is a symmetric two tensor on the word sheet. H alpha beta is a two tensor on the word sheet. And X mu is a is a scalar on this we always need to remember capital X mu is always it's a function of sigma alpha so it's a it's a field so it always has dual interpretation it's it's a vector in the space time manifold but it's a scalar in the target in the Word sheet space. Okay. Word sheet, is, word sheet space does not recognize mu. For word sheet space, mu is not a vector in words. Okay. Uh, but for word sheet recognizes this sigma alpha. Okay. And this is a function of sigma alpha. So this is a symmetric two tensor. This is a scalar on the word sheet. Actually, is a scalar on the word sheet. <coughs> and uh, from here, as we did. For the case of the, uh, without really doing it, I had just mentioned it. Uh, uh, by the way, I have met some of these famous guys like Jumino. Uh, uh, in that, at Sun. So, uh, <coughs> so uh, now, if you, uh, what happens here, that the H alpha beta is conformally related to G alpha beta. Is conformally related to G alpha beta. Uh, I will show it to you a little bit later when I write down the expression for the energy momentum tensor T alpha beta. Okay. Or if I make a slight detour, we will arrive at this definition a little bit later. Uh, but uh, you see, for the time being, let us just assume that this T alpha beta is G alpha beta minus one half uh, S alpha beta 
times h dot g and we will separately also prove that t alpha beta is 0 i owe both of these proofs to you okay how to get the value of t alpha beta to be this and how to get t alpha beta equals to 0 okay assuming that this happens then this would be <coughs> this would be 0 and this would imply g alpha beta proportional to h alpha beta or h alpha beta proportional to g alpha beta okay so from various angles this this we will say it a bit later okay but i thought i could mention it to you so uh, you will see that indeed uh, because of the when you when you when you discover the dynamics of this action you will find at some point that this is defined like this and this is zero which would give you this is zero so this is proportional to g is proportional to h okay uh, anyway uh, right now let us just uh, assume that h alpha beta is conformally related to g alpha beta and in fact it is proportional to g alpha beta so h alpha beta uh, let me put the proportionality constant to be f beta times g alpha beta and if i set beta equals to 1 then this would give me g alpha beta okay uh, this is called as the conformal gauge setting beta equal to 1 